Okay, thank you for waiting. And let's talk very quickly about the agenda today, which is a little bit more about Parallels, Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Pain Points, Parallels RAS Overview, a quick demo and a Q&A at the end. We have a global presence in more than 140 countries, 5,000 plus channel partners. Global trust, 20% of Fortune uh, 500 companies, and in the business to consumer more than 7 million individuals, and in the B2B more than 50,000 businesses using parallel solutions. In our portfolio, we have a few products that you might have heard before. I think the most famous one is Parallels Desktop, which is a virtualization solution to run Windows on Macs and other operating systems as well. Parallels Access, the fastest and easiest and a way to access you know, physical desktops like Macs and PCs uh, through an HTML5 client and as well Android and iOS. Parallels Mac Management to enable Macs to be managed inside SCCM. Parallels Toolbox for Windows and Mac, which I like a lot this particular product, which has different set of powerful tools simplifying every day, like presentation mode, for example. And of course, the product we're discussing today is Parallels Remote Application Server, Parallels RAS, which is an all-in-one remote application deliver and VDI solution, providing access from any device. When we compare ourselves with Citrix or looking to the market itself, I think there's a few metrics that are very important over here. 52% of uh, attendees that answered this particular survey uh, mention about login issues with Citrix, getting too long, too complex, hard to reduce time and make it more efficient. 18% of the Citrix customer base, it's declining um, year over year for multiple reasons, performance, cost, or even what's happening in the product to support specific company use cases, not what they want to push customers to do. And of course, uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktop, three year in year price have increased significantly. So prices went up and you know customers started to look for different solutions that could fulfill their use cases. And there's one that it's not in this particular ch chart is pretty much 80% or more of our customers, they come from Citrix um, base. And in most cases, they were unhappy with the cost and of course, you know, the complexity to manage and then we migrated them to Parallels RAS. So let's compare a little bit more about Citrix virtual apps and desktops and RAS. So in, on the left side, you see uh, Citrix pain points and how we address them long deployment cycles for us, short deployment cycles. Instead of taking months or several weeks, we can deploy RAS in days or maybe a couple of weeks. With COVID-19, we have seen an increase of migrations from Citrix to Parallels RAS, where we have moved a few customers in matters of days. So we have a new success story that just came out that they migrated more or less 600 users in less than a week. So that's possible working with our pre-sales and support engineering team to make sure that happens as quickly as possible. So from a POC to production was a very quick. Another important point is related to version upgrades, which in Citrix have very big disruptions because each new version of Citrix does not support previous versions of Windows. So you have to have different consoles and different components installed depending on the use case. We have one console that oversees all of the window, uh, all of the deployments. So that's something that is, is very important on that side. We also um, don't rely on multiple consoles for specific Citrix component, ADCs or studios and such, or directors and such. We have what is called RAS Controller Console, where you oversee the load balancer, you see the host, the VDI connections, templates, and so on. And this is very important because here 
even for templating, you can use RAS console for that matter. Of course, it complements a few things with the hypervisor level, but that's very important to, to highlight, you know, fewer places to look at. Different licenses for a variety of features, especially on the Citrix side, and the level of detail you need or features you need. In Parallels RAS, it's one price for all features, including monitoring, reporting, VDI, application publishing, and so on. And if we move to the next slide, we can see that, especially on the software maintenance, Citrix has different modules, prices, which the last couple of years have increased by 100%. Our model is simple, concurrent connections and subscription base. And you can do one year, two years, three years, you pick the best option you want, which includes all modules. You also don't need to rely on specific skill sets, which in Citrix world is very expensive and to, to get certified and maintain those certifications. Usually we work with Windows admins and we work on the automation side, on the push, uh, on the setting side, and it's fairly easier to learn how RAS works opposed to Citrix. And we have different wizards and tutorials and documentation as well to support that. In fact, we have a lot of how-to videos showing how to deploy your own farm. And if you choose to use um, Azure or AWS, we can use their marketplace templates and deploy them on your environment in a matter of minutes to have that up and running. In terms of features, because we don't have different modules, you can have Windows Client Device Management, unlimited reports, also including custom reports, as well supports Windows Server 2008 R2 all the way to Windows Server 2019. And very soon, hopefully, we'll be supporting the WVD uh, use cases on Azure as a single solution for, for that matter. You don't have uh, to have certifi certif uh, certified professionals. This is already pre-built in, in our support that you can contact our team at any time, 24 by seven. But of course we provide free certification for you to know more how about the product works. And instead of a very lengthy process, this usually takes more or less seven hours, which is our basic training plus our advanced training. And limited support of the Citrix side that requires you to have a technical account manager. In Parallels, you don't have to. You just call support. You go to my.parallels.com and then you can get support from there, which is actually pretty, pretty handy. What are the key benefits in Remote Application Server? Well, we, we talk about an all-in-one VDI solution delivering applications to any devices, anywhere, and in this case, you can, we have, you know, HTML5 experience, which you can, you know, come built in, pre-configure in, in, in RAS, and as well, we provide native clients for Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and we also work with fin client vendors such as iGel, um, HP, and Tenzig, and other vendors where you can you know, use the client to consume um, your business applications and desktops through non-Windows uh, VDI solutions. We are focused as well in enhanced data security. We track where users log in, from where they log in, for how long they have been logged in. You can also see in real time for any given users information about what applications are being open and of course, if there is a need for you to interact with the users, like a remote control settings, you can connect or ask the user for permission to do that. Um, also, it's easy to deploy. There are several ways to deploy a RAS, which can be installing in your data centers side by side with your Citrix infrastructure, or you can use a cloud provider. You can use like Azure, you could be using AWS or even a third party for service provider on you in your own data center. 
And the way we can do VDI interacts with them. We integrate with uh, multiple uh, you know, hypervisors and as well with cloud hypervisor like uh, Azure hypervisor. So the idea here is to reduce your total cost of ownership, your TCO, where we have a much more affordable solution. It has most of the features that you need or even more and it's ready to be deployed side by side from what you have. And of course, if you're running older versions of Citrix, which is, which means you are out of support, we can help you to migrate to a solution that it's still supported, especially with older Windows operating systems. On the user experience, these are very important things. And we provide native clients in HTML5. In HTML5, we provide drag and drop file support to upload and download files, audio redirection like micro, uh, like um, you know um, audio itself. And if you go to native clients, we have bidirectional audio, quick keypad for iOS and Android devices, native gestures, allowing you to use complex applications on tablets which where they were not designed. So we have our own magnifier. You can use our own printing redirection technology on mobile clients and drag and drop. Now, what translates is for other users is ultra fast login because we have machine learning uh, mechanisms to learn user login trends, depending how they log in, what days of the week they log in, and the client automatically caches and log in the user as long as the machine is uh, available. So when they try to open the application, it won't have that very long cycle to identify the VM, log in the user, load the profile, and so on. However, if they want to use um, other methods, you can still have faster login using better profile technologies, which we integrate with FS Logix to do so. And printing and scanning is supported in RAS, which we have uh, our own printing uh, technology, which we will redirect printers from multiple devices uh, to the sessions that you're connected to. And scanning is available for Windows and very, very soon we'll be supporting uh, redirection of scanners for Mac clients as well. And lastly, single sign-on where we can do native Windows single sign-on on specific thin clients like iGel or Windows. And if you're using SAML, using HTML5 client to authenticate with Azure AD, Okta, Ping, and other providers to do the user handshake. Keep in mind, um, ADFS is another use case. So as long as you have SAML and service providers, are, I think, is the big use case here uh, to integrate with the policies that you have, which also might include or not multi-factor authentication, which is also built in in remote application server. So when I talk about MFA it leads to this next slide, which here in the bottom, multi-factor authentication and smart card redirection. So we work with multiple providers and as well with uh, free ones like Microsoft Authenticator uh, or Google Authenticator, which they are one-time password OTPs, which generates a barcode, a QR code that you you know scan it and start working with. You can use them in RAS. And by the way, you can restrict to users or locations to use multi-factor authentication. Therefore, you can pick and choose who applies the use or the requirement to use multi-factor authentication. Now we monitor, we control and restrict data access. So applications might be restricted depending if users are inside the organization or working from home. So you can set certain parameters and boundaries there. And you can enforce client policies, which means users cannot make changes to the clients from RAS console to all of the clients. So one place that manages all of them. And most policies work with all clients. Of course, there are specific ones like for Chrome OS or Android or even iOS that doesn't apply. 
but in, in general consensus, it works in all clients. That brings the topic about the agility and business readiness. So thinking about RAS and Citrix is, do you want to keep your environment with a high availability format? Do you want to run in one data center or your data center will be Azure, for example, using an express route? So RAS can be deployed in one or multiple data centers in a single zone where you can manage those resources active active or if you want to do active passive that will be you know applied there as well one stop solution for rd session host or application publishing shared desktops and vdi keep in mind we can mix and match different operating systems and technologies together which means different windows server versions different windows guest operating system versions like 7 10 or Windows Server 2008 R2 all the way to 29, excuse me, to 2019. We're multi-cloud ready. We have customers that use RAS on-prem or cloud or a mix of them, depending, especially on the use case. Basically what we work with customers is you tell us how you want remote application server to be deployed, and then we can give you the best guidelines to do so not going through a specific approach like Citrix Cloud, pushing VMs, and, and so on. So our approach is far more uh, flexible. And lastly, we're hypervisor agnostic. You can run RAS pretty much on every hypervisor, including KVM and OpenStack. However, if you're using uh, or if you have the need to use template management, like uh, auto-cloning or auto scaling, those work on Hyper-V, they work on VMware, they work on scale, they work on Azure, and today on Citrix Hypervisor. And lastly, Nutanix AHV. So if you have those hypervisors, you can do, we can do template management for you. On the deployment side, well, we say it's easy. Of course it is easy we can auto configure the client centralized management we support multi-tenancy which i haven't commented before which allows you to have a pool of gateways if you will and load balancers that it's a, a one entry point and connects to multiple ras farms this is a great functionality for service providers or if you have a company with different groups they are completely independent from each other, like independent active directories and so on, you can have one entry point that would talk to all of your tenants. And of course, the communication in between them, it is encrypted. We provide PowerShell and REST APIs for automation if you prefer to do scripting to um, you know, schedule maintenance in, or in REST farms or semi-automate or automate the complete deployments. And we have wizard-based deployments to control publishing, user access, and if you, you know, set invitations to users on how they can start onboarding their clients. And we have customers that they use uh, Windows GPOs to deploy clients and push or pre-push configurations that later on will be uh, pre-configured by the RAS client. TCO side. One license model, fewer complexities, you know, net to ask modules or specific infrastructure for certain components. There are no add-ons. And comparing to what we ha you have today, it is pretty much a much affordable solution uh, than that you have. In the core capabilities, here are a few features that we do multi-tenancy architecture, SAML, and of course, Microsoft Azure, where you can run RAS on Azure, including the hypervisor integration to uh, have elasticity based on AI control to add and remove, uh, and of course, spin resources to optimize infrastructure costs. We have uh, the ability to work with 
uh, as well multi-factor authentication session pre-launch which is ai learning way to understand how users run on ras universal printing technology built in and of course we can uh, use our own load balancer or work with partner load balancers like amazon aws azure load balancer camp and oh, and other vendors how the process works one you install ras on your citrix farm on you know wherever or another server that you have push our rd session host agent and vdi if you want to work on templates publish them and then give access to users this whole process here one two and three is less than 90 minutes to be completed we also have a migration tool especially if you're using zenapp 65 where we have a quick migration that maps your applications move your applications and permissions that does not include the vdi scope but you can use it uh, as a guideline to migrate of course it doesn't delete citrix it just copies the configuration that you have and then uh, brings automatically to ras the migration steps actually is also simple you install ras export citrix settings via citrix api you install ras citrix migration tool execute the migration script and the settings are done and let's take a look into a few success stories from here this is one that uh, they migrated from Citrix to RAS and they saved over 85% of their cost for one of our, you know, their customers. They also like working with our support group. High quality cross-platform support is the number one benefit when they switch from Citrix to Parallels RAS. The main driving factor was cost of licensing for, for this gentleman over here. And we also looked at Citrix, but it was a lot more expensive and trickier. So before we jump into a demo or a further discussions, I think uh, most of your questions I already addressed in the Q&A, but let's take a look in, the Q, uh, in here in the takeaways. So we provide a high performance, intuitive and productive user experience on any device from anywhere enabling your organization to be more agile with a centralized architecture that supports RD session host application publishing or shared desktops and VDI from on-prem hybrid and public clouds, reducing the risk of data loss and malicious activity by preventing unauthorized access to applications and data. Applications can be also desktops in this case. And the next steps would be, after we go to a demo, a proof of concept if you're interested, free, 30 days, we provide you support. You can try them on Azure, AWS, or on your own infrastructure. Let's go and demonstrate more about Remote Application Server. Of course, there's limited time today because it's a webinar and I want to give, you know, time and respect your availability today. When users connect to RAS for the first time, this is the first thing that they would see, a portal where it can be white label with your logo, different languages, and of course, how you can log in users. So for example, on the client side, they can download the client, and follow instructions on how to download and pre-configure. The languages aspect, you can pick and choose the one that you prefer to have. And for a login perspective, depending how you use RAS, can be using a user ID and password coming from Active Directory, or we could use um, SAML authentication. In the demo environment, I have different entry points. Of course, in production would be the one that you choose, you know, the most. But an interesting thing here, this is a feature 
that you can include different URLs as you wish to you know, um, connect to other systems or portals and so on. When I click login, you can have a predefined login and a verification of the client. And here is what we're doing, uh, a verification if you have the client installed. In this case, I do. So that's the reason it popped. But if I declined or have only HTML5 access to the application, that would be restricted to that point on. Based on my user profile, I have management apps, which is I publish my REST console, different applications. I can go to uh, Windows 10 without GPU, a Windows 10 with GPU. And the reason I have this option here, first of all, RDP allows you to manage GPU and my demo environment is running on Azure. So if I need to have VDIs that require GPU use case, I can publish to specific users. If not, I can just open a virtual desktop and the application that I need. So let's start with uh, application, for example, Microsoft Office. And if I double click, it will open with the native client. But I want to show you first the option if I right click, I can open it with HTML5. You can also configure RAS to have a standard behavior to always open HTML5 and users using client can default there. Now here is uh, Excel open. It's inside the browser and I created pretty much a virtual workspace here. I can go back to applications. Now I can right click and open in Word and Word will be opening here as well. So let's say I want to create a new document. I will use this particular template with the application open now, make changes, whatever. I can save it to my profile, which in my backend I'm using FS Logix, or I can just print it. And if I use the printing option, we have here the 2X virtual printer, which is pretty much our printing redirection technology. Click on print is pretty much interacting with the browser and packaging the particular document. It's like printing a page. I can change from PDF to select one of the printers that I have on my computer. That's simple. If I want to upload or download this file, we can click over here on the arrow, option to download or upload. So let's say I want to upload and let's go to my downloads folder and I want to include this particular file in. Open, and then I can go to my folders and then upload it. And this file, now it's been uploaded to my profile managing RAS. And of course, if I wanted to in, you know, add this file in here, it would be you know, super easy to include it or add it or be changed or modified. Let's say I want to transition now from the client in HTML5 to native, go back to my app. And let's say now I want to open Excel one more time, but instead of right clicking, I will double click. Client warning, my HTML fast session will be terminated and all of my documents will be transformed or moved over here. So look, two new icons showed up that I have Excel and Word. If I click on Word, that's the document I have. And in Excel, exactly where I you know, stop right before opening a document. So I can open personal management, open and create, and then I can open the template. That easy, that simple it is. From user perspective, using HTML5 or the native client is the option they want. And of course, the same approach will apply if I change the view now to use a shared desktop or a, a full desktop as is. So let's double up over here, go to HTML5 now using a virtual desktop. So we suggest users to use as maximized. And now this is my Windows uh, shared desktop running on a complete HTML5 approach. I can click on cancel. And here I can upload again, download files, use shortcuts or clipboard. 
And if I want to transition again from uh, HTML5 client to native client, no problem. Just double click. And that will transition my session as well from HTML5 to full client. So that will take a few moments to load, open the client. And I can just go here to my virtual desktop, disassemble from launcher, and here you go. That's an option in the client if you want to open a little window. So I like that option. So I can see multiple screens and, and play around. So the desktop was launched. See the difference? Policies were applied and the background was replaced because we're enforcing different level of level, levels of optimization. So your use case, it's pretty much what you want to do and we discuss together, GPU, no GPU, profile management, no profile management, and so on. But let's talk about the mechanics, how RAS works. So here in my RAS environment, let me open um, my management console. And in this case, I will use HTML5 one more time. It's easier in this case to see the whole console. So here, at my session transition from client to HTML5 again. Look, my Excel and Word is over here. And here is the console. So first of all, we can always use wizards. And the wizards um, can be defined to add a new host, publish an application, or invite users. And in my farm settings, you can have a complete overview or a dashboard of what it's working or not. And my deployment, I have a few things running. I have an enrollment server running for SAML. I have publishing agents running in the US and one in Australia. So it means that you can have decentralized management to um, distribute for field over or high availability. I have different gateways, a VDI provider for auto scaling, and I have different uh, session hosts. And on every single category, you have different components. My hosts, I can right click to one of my hosts Remove from group, uh, from group, I can show published resources that tells me all of those hashtags, apps, they are you know, running on this particular server. So if you need to you know, perform maintenance, you know more or less where the application is running. You can have groups. You can have scheduled operations, for example, to know if you want to disable or drain servers or groups or reboots based on maintenance application patches that you might want to do. And we provide a complete session management um, approach where you can see users that have, have been connected. So I have uh, two different sessions connected here uh, and I can come and see, for example, disconnect user, log off, remote control, show processes. I can see that you know all applications that particular session is running. And I can just go to this one, for example, and also see the processes and here see different apps. I have Excel, Word, and my consoles. Let's see what happens if I kill Excel. So if I go over here, queue process, boom, the application was terminated on the back end. And then we have a refresh to reflect in the front end here on the console as well. You can have VDI providers, which is very good in two cents. One of them, it works for traditional VDI, like Windows 7 or 10, or RDSH cloning. So if I have RDSH cloning, I can create groups where we can use templates. And based on the template, you can set auto scaling options above 50% of what I size every single RD session host, add another one or add two or more. And as it goes down here, the, the suggested example is 20%. When it goes below 20%, it will drain and remove the resource. It will decommission. This is great for on-prem and on Azure, pretty much to manage costs and deallocate resources that you don't need. And using the templates here in the VDI, I have a couple of templates, one for Windows 10, and another one for Windows 10 GPUs. I can right click, show the VMs. Right now, uh, my GPU virtual machine is on. 
I can just come, for example, and perform operations to stop it. Uh, or I can just go to my templates. I can, for example, test, show also VMs that are running. This one is also you know, running as we speak. And we can also see it's random access. So nobody's accessing this video. And if we had any active sessions, we would be seeing the current sessions over here, like in our DSH, you could manage them over here. You have also remote PCs option, which do COVID-19 is becoming more and more popular again, where you can use physical PCs or non um, standard hypervisors like KVM base, for example, or OpenStack, where you can deploy Windows virtual machines like a Windows 10, you can add them to the to the pool as well. Uh, so let me just jump into another environment here that I have just a couple of examples to show to you. So here in my remote PC pool, uh, in the VDI area is showing empty. However, in the VDI pool, I have one for just remote PCs. And if I go to my remote PC pools, I can see different ones added over here. And there's two ways to do it. The one of them here showing the persistent and random, they are part of the provider list. And the fact that I'm using a different list parameters uh, here in the remote PC, I'm using statics, I can include new remote PCs based on the host name and MAC address. Keep in mind, the ones that have been added, they will not be displayed here anymore because they are part of the pool. So let's go back to my demo environment where you have gateways, publishing agents, load balancer, which is a standard feature. On Azure, we use um, Azure load balancer. And on the customization side, you can have different ones. And my first login screen here, I'm using just US demo. And this is my default, but I have different ones that are configured to use SAML. And if I look on SAML configurations, we have different things that you can set up, like the, how the URL behaves, the branding, I'm using black instead of red, different colors, messages. And of course, when the SAML configuration is done, that will be telling which you know, profile we're using. Of course, you can have the language bars and other settings you know, set up as well. Now, in the enrollment service side, we have the component that has been set up. And if I change the setting here to uh, my connections, there's SAML where you tie it to my theme, like I just mentioned, Parallels team and the Australian team and how they are connected. Okay, so the next point to look here, um, just because of time, is load balancing options, where we automatically load balance user resources based on those three metrics. And we limit each user to one session per desktop, especially to manage and uh, keep the good use of our decals in, in use if it's applicable. Universal printing and scanning is also available. So scanning here, we use WIA and Twain protocols. And printing, we're using our uh, uh, printing technology. And in this case, it's open to all servers. Connections, it's where you define SAML and multi-factor authentication, where you can set different providers. For example, Google Authenticator could be used for others' OTPs. You can exclude list and you can configure. And based on the configuration side, it will be based on the user settings that you apply. Like, you know, if you want me to be excluded or a department, it all depends on your Active Directory settings for that. So let's see how that works. Let's go back to the US demo entry page and let's switch to use SAML. Remember, we put like a black banner instead of the red. The authentication is happening through Active Directory on Azure. And here's the difference. It's very subtle in this case. Here's one, and here's the other one. 
So I just wanted to highlight a very simple change you do. However, again, you can customize the themes and the authentication based on profiles that you define. I mentioned about controlled policies to all of your clients. You can have one or many, depending on your use case, where we control all sorts of different aspects, connections, display settings, if you're using multi-monitors or not, enabling printing, scanning, if you want to use audio or not. And if you want to control local drive and resource redirect, redirection, controlling clipboard, disk drives, devices, in this case, devices are USB devices, ports, or even file transfer. And in many cases, uh, we let customers to use auto detection uh, on the protocol level, but sometimes it's recommended on the use case to use specific profiles. And here are a few ones, and usually I leave my demo to be satellite where we're optimizing the protocol to, to be working the best way for rendering and working well with the clients, depend, and we don't know sometimes where people are accessing this demo system. And in the advanced setting side, you can control, for example, if you're using DPI aware, different certificates. And in the control side, you can say, can you allow users to add new connections or not use RDPs or prohibit saving passwords? Or even if you have a specific redirection that you need to set a new backup gateway before uh, the farm is unavailable, you can you know, set this particular parameter as well without telling users. From a management perspective, you can have different administrators and different roles. You can have different profiles as well for each. And you can also set audits. And the audits are useful for multiple reasons. One, to know who changed something in the system, or you can use it to undo certain actions. For example, uh, we apply a setting to change a database set, you know, change. We come with a built-in monitoring um, module where you can see metrics related to the health of the environment, disk, session information, and of course, how reporting um, will be given. And keep in mind, this information is available to users, or sorry, to admin users or IT admins at any time. And in fact, they can even open in a browser to make sure you know that it would be presented for them. And lastly, we have the reporting engine. And finally, the reporting engine where you can see different reports here that are standard in remote application server. You can create your own in SQL and publish them too. Or we can see free user information, user activity, and application usage, for example that it's retrieving those reports from, um, <clears throat> from SQL Server. We can see the list of applications over the last week. User information, I'll pick me, for example, Victor. View the report. And of course, it's not only the last week. We can look through as long as you want, as long as information store, like let's say from the beginning of March, review the report and then see all the sessions that started, ended, for how long was active, and so on. I hope I address all of your questions during this webinar throughout the chat. And if you have additional questions, I'll leave the screen on for the next few minutes to address them through the chat window as well.